All right, welcome everyone to the RSP Film Room, and today I have a great guest. This is a guy that I really enjoy having on these shows, and for a number of reasons. One is that Mr. Josh Liskowitz is a very learned individual who you can find at Pro Football Focus doing fine work on the draft as well as many other things. But on top of that is when Josh comes on this show, he always has a knack for picking defensive backs. And there's only about one or two guys that actually have the, I'm going to say have the confidence to select defensive backs to, to actually study. And this is a very deep draft filled with them. So, it, you know, I, I feel like that we finally come to an oasis um, at the RSP film room where we can actually start looking at some defensive backs. So, Josh, it's a pleasure to have you back on. Always have to be on, Matt. Thanks for having me. Oh, well, this is going to be good. And tell us a little about who we're going to be watching. Introduce it, Introduce our new character to the show and why we're going to be watching him. We are going to be watching some Obi Melifonwu, the safety slash corner, depending on what team you are and uh, what you think you can do with this skill set, uh, from Connecticut. Uh, he's a guy that I got first look at at Senior Bowl. I hadn't looked at any of his film yet. And he was jumping down at playing quarterback, bullying wide receivers with a six foot four frame. And uh, generally playing solid at safety is tough to get a real feel for guys at senior bowl, especially safeties, just because of the lack of the contact. They're really not involved in too much, and certainly in team drills. But uh, then he blew up the combine, which everyone knew was coming. Uh, what do you go, 4 4 0, 40? Uh, 44 inch vertical. Um, I think he killed a bear when he was only three. <laughs> so, I mean, as far as all that, I mean, he's he's got all those boxes checked off. But uh, so between the combine and uh, senior bowl, I wanted to make sure I saw him on film, and I was every bit as impressed uh, with this film as. We were with his combine stuff. I really think looking at the whole body of work on his film, uh, he does a lot of different things at, at a very, uh, very high capacity right now. He's not some raw guy just because he went to UConn and he wasn't on the tip of everyone's tum tongue right away. So I'm excited to get into this breakdown with you. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to watch probably about, I don't know, 12 to 15 plays it looks like that, that Josh is – kindly looked through from a variety of games including um, some highlight packages as well as things against Houston and UCF, USF and Virginia among others. So we're going to get this started and make sure that we can both see the screen. If you're new to the RSP film room it's just a couple of guys watching film looking at things in slow motion talking about technique concepts as well as strategy of the game and let's make sure that we can get this up for everyone to see. How's that looking for you? I can see it just fine. Okay, well, good. Then we're going to get it rolling, and let's see if we got uh, everything queued up the way that we're looking for here. Let's get this play started here. It's a very nice, confident run lane that he gets through. Yep, and one of the things he does a very consistent job of is staying square to his target. You'll notice while he's attacking aggressively, uh, which we'll get into a little bit more later, but that's not always what he's known for, uh, certainly in the run game, is just attacking downhill. But even though he is attacking downhill, he's square to his target. He's got his head across. He wraps up solidly. That's a really solid tackle for being such an aggressive play. Yeah. Very confident group. Very, very confident look there, yeah. Nice. Okay. Moving forward. Let's there you see, see obviously, is some ball skills on this play. Yeah. You love seeing guys that want to compete with the ball in the air. And there's no question he does it. Obviously, he has the size, but... He's attacking the ball in the, the air in front of him. He's taking it away. He's making sure he gets his feet down. Uh, he can catch a contested ball away from his body. Because, you know, it's, it's one thing. It's nice when a defender, a uh, defensive back can break up a pass. But interceptions, those change games. So 
Well, a lot of them, especially at the safety position, can come from uh, guys just being in the right place at the right time. Uh, something like this, obviously, that's what you want to see. That's what translates to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. And when you take a look at this play, I mean, you know, the joke is is that if you can't catch, you play defensive back. But, you know, looking yep. at this situation, I mean, that's a that's a tough play. I mean, that's a good play for a wide receiver. Very nice use of his hands there. Yep. All right. One of the other things we'll see with that as you're keying this one up, too. Uh, that was from a too high look. You're going to stand right here, right away. You see he's single high yeah. on this one. And there was a good mix of that at UConn, and I think he's perfectly capable of doing both at the next level. Yeah, this that's some good is, range. This is one of my absolute favorite plays of the year, and I was happy I found this clip because it shows the behind uh, the angle from the end zone. You see where the re – look where he is now. And look where his receiver makes his break. Their yeah. receiver is three, four yards ahead of him. Yeah. And Obi cuts him off at the boundary, makes the pick, and toe taps to, to finish the play. That is a spectacular play. Yeah, let's take a look at it from that end zone view here. I think that's next on okay. the clip. There we go. There we go. And it's a nice job. You see you glance go. at the receiver and then look back to the quarterback to kind of triangulate whether he needs to make that burst to the ball, and he does. Yeah. I mean, he's he's making that cut. That number one is, what is he, probably five yards off? Yeah. And that ball is, that's not a, a bad ball. He had another interception uh, that was somewhat similar in this exact game where the receiver or the quarterback threw it a little bit behind the, the receiver so I helped him a little bit but it was it was a similar play where he just closed made up that ground and when you watch this live too uh, this is something else with his athleticism we, we'll get into a little bit later too it doesn't look like he's really moving but it's because he's so big and he has such a long stride it he doesn't look like he's having to put forth a ton of effort no to really get moving and clearly he has to be moving at top speed to be able to close on this play like he did. Absolutely. So tell us about why it's important that you want to look at two high looks versus one high looks when it comes to a safety and projecting them towards the NFL. Well, I, I think it, it speaks to the versatility of a player. I mean, if you, you look at the two high, okay, I'm thinking a, a team like Carolina, which could certainly use an upgrade at safety. They're more likely to go with that look right now um, you can you can see both of them kind of interchangeably working in the box uh, it, against the run. You're going to see maybe more cover four, cover two looks. And in the single high, that's when you're going to get your true free safety that's out on an island back there uh, playing a lot of cover one, cover three, which is really what most of the NFL does now. Now, he'll play in the box. That's probably where most are projecting him to play. Uh, is at strong safety. And like I said, most of, the, most of the league is running a lot of cover one, cover three, so he's going to end up being that safety that's up within eight, nine yards of the line of scrimmage, uh, maybe playing on tight ends, which obviously his size is great for there. But yeah. as we're going to see, and certainly this play is, is evidence of it, he has the range to play free safety uh, on the back end as well. So if he gives you that versatility as well to where you're not completely pigeonholed, like uh, like Malik Hooker, who's almost assuredly going top 10. It certainly seems like that, and, and I have no argument against that. But at the same time, Obi offers so much more because he can still play free safety like Hooker can. But I don't want Hooker anywhere near the box like, like Obi is. He's not a consistent tackler. Uh, he doesn't have the strength and aggressiveness to take on blocks like Obi can. So I, I think his ability to do both and fit in any scheme is a real boon to him. Yeah, and I think one of the things that you mentioned when you talk about the NFL playing a lot of cover one, if you're a you know if you're a fan who watches ESPN and you like those quarterback shows, you know John Gruden talked a lot with uh, I want to say it was Josh Dobbs recently where he 
he talked about a cover one concept which is um, known as plugger in the NFL, where you have two linebackers kind of taking a zone and they're playing the zone in the middle of the field and one takes the running back and the other takes the quarterback. And especially in these spread concept systems with these mobile quarterbacks, you'll often see one of them actually used as a spy. And the importance of that is that, you know, you can certainly, you know, the, a lot of the focus is on the linebacker, but the linchpin to that type of a concept is going to be your safety, playing in, your free safety, playing in the middle of the field, and possessing the range that you're seeing here from Melifonwu. Yep, absolutely. All right, so let's move forward, and we're going to take a look at uh, this next game. Looks like we got a little USF going on here. Let's check that this, out. This is a really rangy play here. Look, he's, again, single high, middle of field. Oh, I remember That's, this play. Yeah, now it's yeah. a definite underthrown ball. There's no question about that but he has to track that a long ways. And yeah. not only does he get there in plenty of time to where even if I think he, if it was a better throw downfield, I think he's still going to have a good shot at it. He's never loses sight of that ball. He's got it the whole way. Yeah. So it's not just him finding a spot and then trying to locate the ball. He's on top of that the entire way. That's, that's really good ball skills right there, being able to uh, locate and understand where his place is on the field to know that he's got the angle on that right away. For sure. You know, I mean, there are receiver prospects in the NFL, heading into the NFL, and there's a couple. Sammy Coates is a good example of a guy who does not track a ball over his head very well. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is a guy that's showing that in a way that may be even better than a guy like Sammy Coates, who was very productive last year in his second year, but still possessing some of these issues. Yep, absolutely. All right, very nice play. Marlon Mack may see that happen again. Let's see. <laughs> All right. So now we have him in look, looks to be like a two high look or maybe even a quarters look, depending on what, what do you have here? What, what, what do you see? I think, yeah, I want to say this is a quarters look and uh, he just makes the wrong read. He, is he, no, okay, never mind. That wasn't what I was okay. looking at. Okay. I, I was, I was thinking it was a different play. Uh, this is still a positive. He makes the read on this so quick. Obviously, he's not involved in what happens in the actual play. Right. But look how quick he reads this post route of the inside receiver and yeah. just immediately cuts off that angle. If the quarterback does try to throw there, he's going to either pick it off or break it up yeah, because but... he's made that break at the exact same time that the wide receiver has. Yeah. That's really nice. I mean, that is very nice diagnosis because let's look at where that break really begins, which is right there. About the twenty nine, and look and look at his feet. He's yeah. already got he's already got that angle cut. Yeah, and you know, I mean, he's the quarterback's doesn't even have the ball out now. He, he at this point, you know where the quarterback's going based on where he's he's throwing here. But it's it, it's still like you said, great anticipation of the route. Yeah, very important. And is there anything that we could even see, maybe even a little earlier, that might give us a? You know, I mean, I think he he. Obviously, he understands his responsibility deep because you see with the alignment here with the inside, with the linebacker yeah. playing inside, him over top. He knows what his responsibility is. And, he, you know, that reaction is very nice. I mean, he's moving just as the quarterback brings that ball up, so he had no idea where this ball was going to go until right. he takes that first step here. But the action, the thought, came out way before that. So, yeah, very well. That's a nice, that's a nice cat grab. And I also think he, he does that in a situation and, and, you know, you pause there, right. When it's looking at the quarterback with his arm up at the top of the drop to where I don't think in that instance, he's in danger of being hit with a double move on that. Cause that's certainly something you want to look out there, especially when you're in quarters. Yeah. Ultimately that's your responsibility, but I think he, he did it in such a way uh, with the timing on that, that in the context of that play, that was okay to jump that. Yeah. And he probably, and that makes sense because I wish I didn't exit out. Um, my apologies on that one, but it would have been nice to be able to see. You could see there that he had enough room probably to recover and, and give chase if he got if a double move came on that play. Mm -hmm. But but the depth from which he was attacking from it, that makes sense that it would be safe. It's as much about the angle as it was attacking forward too. Yeah.
Okay. This is this is one of those, and and I know we're looking at a half speed, uh, where he's he just doesn't look like he's moving very much, but he's still able to get out and, and cut off the boundary. Yeah. Um, and I mean, this is good acceleration from number two. I mean, you see who he beats at the edge here. So this guy's off to a pretty good. Oh yeah. I mean, he. Yeah, he's had a good clip. He actually doesn't get touched, so he's at full speed there, and and yeah. really, uh, Obi is is well off the play, and that's not that's not his responsibility ultimately um, to be on the boundary. But he's able to cut that off and prevent further damage there with yeah. his speed. Yeah, so we're seeing a very rangy player, and that is that's a wonderful trait to have as a free safety that. You can no be question. that last line of defense. All right, so now we have another look against Virginia, it looks like. Okay, this is this is the coverage bus I thought we had a couple times ago. Okay. So here we are. We're, we're in now what looks like a quarters look, and we got an RPO. And so essentially he's responsible for that deep quarter and he jumps the, the screen route underneath when really it's the underneath linebacker that should have that gives up the post route from the tight end over the top. And it's just a bad throw for college quarterback reasons. Yeah. But, but really that, that should have been a solid play. And that's just an instance of him biting up. That's not something I saw a lot of on film. But when you're in quarters like that, that's you got to be careful on that. We talked about the the, the really nice cutoff he had earlier, uh, but you got to be careful about not jumping those too early. And I, that's a case on this one. Right, and that's just one of the, and that's a common thing with any defender. Mm -hmm. You know, really, is that sometimes you can abandon your responsibilities too quickly. Yep. Yep. Again, I, I don't think it's an extreme habit, but it's worth that's, noting. Uh, Yes, it is. No yeah. question. Yeah. And it's one of those things. I mean, we, because when you're talking about the difference between a guy being a third or fourth round pick and being a first or second round pick, you know, it's these nitpicking type of plays that make the difference for whether you're going to get on the field early and be relied upon. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So this is a series of plays, I believe, that you, you listed to me about him and tackling. So this mm -hmm. is where I think this begins here. There, there we go. There he is again, square to the boundary. He's got a he's got a long ways to go to track that. And obviously he's unblocked. He's not having to worry about blockers because he beats twenty one out there. Yeah. But uh, that's again you see range and control at the same time. Yep. Very nice. Makes it look easy. And there are a lot of guys who don't. The more time you have to between you and the ta and the and the ball carrier, sometimes the more those guys kind of crumble and overthink it. Oh, well, there's no question. Yeah. Well, an open field has to get to the boundary. One other thing we're seeing too here is he's not a real explosive hitter. No. Um, and, and I think that's one of those things where, you know, you have a quarterback who's 6'6", 240, you expect he has a huge arm. So you see a uh, safety that's 6'4", 224, can run like the wind. You expect he's just going to absolutely blow everyone up. He's automatically Cam Chancellor. And really, that's not Obi. Um, it's, and I, I have I've been told by one team in particular – that actually views him as too soft for them. And I think it's in part because he just doesn't make the splashy tackle. But to me, I would much rather have his technique and consistency. Now, on this play, he doesn't quite have the angle and has to go high. But at the same time, I mean, he's bringing a guy down in the open field. Yeah, I, I would much rather 
have his dependability back there than have, I, I hate to pick on Buda Baker, but have a guy like him that's just so out of control every time. He might make a couple of splash plays, but I think at the next level, he's going to miss some tackles that are going to lead to huge, huge gains. Yeah, and, and I, I th- don't think you're going to get that the same rate with Obi. And I think that's a very good analysis about safety play in general and the differences of how people may look at it. Because, I mean, let's use an example even moving forward. You know, as as everyone knows, I study mostly skill players, but a guy who's probably going to go undrafted in this in in this year is going to be Joseph Yerby, the running back out of Miami, who's a second, mm-hmm. you know, who backed up Mark Walton this year. But when you watch Joseph Yerby catch a pass out in the backfield like this, and he's a very shifty guy with a good stiff arm for his size, this is the type of play that with a Buda Baker, you know, who's coming out of control, he's probably going to be able to put one move on Baker and maybe make him miss. Whereas with, you know, with Obi here, Maybe he's able to stiff arm OB, maybe with the right angle. I mean, if the angle doesn't come on there, he might be able to win that. But most likely, OB's going to drag him down by the arm. Yep. So, and that's what you're going to see in the NFL is maybe your top player, maybe your top running back with a wicked stiff arm is going to be able to to slough off a guy like OB on a play like this. But... It, more likely than anything, it's just going to slow the running back down and more guys are going to come to the ball and rally to the ball and it'll be helpful. So, yeah, I hear you. I think that's I think that makes total sense. We got one more on this, too. Let's, okay. let's look at that. Yeah, and at that point, too, on the on the stiff arm point, I think that's that's where his natural strength, size, and length is going to help him out, too. Absolutely. As long as he gets on top of that quickly, I don't think that's going to be a, a frequent issue. Right. Yeah, and this is a nice job getting through traffic here as his yep. teammate gets blocked. Yep, he does give up a little bit of ground there, gives up a couple yards. So I think that's, you know, things like that. Um, as to a smaller guy, too, I, I think that's probably where the soft label comes yeah. uh, from a little bit. But at the same time, I, I don't see it being a problem where he's going to be giving up huge plays. So, I mean... Yeah. Ultimately, ultimately safety. The word safe is in safety. So, right. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, again, he might not make a hundred tackles for loss. I, I think he's gonna lower the misses, yeah. and and he's not gonna just get totally blocked out of there. I don't ever see that happening. And and I'm not sure. And this stuff. and it seems kind of nitpicky to me anyway because he just he just has to avoid a you know, this little block going on right here right. to his left. And he's trying to square up so th- this whole time. And once he does square up on this cutback, yeah, he catches this guy. But I'd rather have that, you know, even well, though it's well, 31. It, yeah, and ultimately his responsibility is, is going to be more toward the edge here. Yeah. So him taking that angle to get outside and to maintain outside leverage is appropriate. Exactly. Phil, let it flow inside where he has help. So, yeah, well done. Yeah, I, I think that might be a little nitpicking from some folks who may mm-hmm. may feel that way about him. All right, so here we go again. Looks like we got okay. a little bit of a quarters look. Got a screen. Yeah. That time he whiffs. Yep. That time, that time he came up too aggressively, too hard an angle, and that's what ends up happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's again, it's that catch-22 where, well, if he gives up an extra two yards but makes the play as opposed to giving up the big play here, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll take those two extra yards. That's Ultimately, that's what I want for my safety more, when you more stu- so than yeah, they when, highlight. When you studied him, did you find that – that when he was playing more safety work in role in true to the word safe, that he was much more effective as a tackler than he was when he was being super aggressive as of right here. Was that a tendency? Is that why you noted this one? No, I more so to, to discuss the label and, and why I think it's unfair, especially for his position. You know, I, again, it's so easy to look at his, his size 
and uh, just his physical presence and immediately think Cam Chancellor, strong safety, that's it. But the more I see him and think about, the more I kind of think that, yeah, okay, if you want to put him at corner, like like if you're uh, in Atlanta or a Seattle, they love those big cover three corners. I think he could probably do that. But maybe free safety is the best position for him because, again, well, he's not – may not quite be Malik Hooker in terms of that range. I, I mean, I, I think the difference is minimal. And he has all these other skill sets too with that, and including the dependability as a tackler in space. I kind of wonder if maybe free safety is his best position. I got you. That makes sense. I think we saw this play. That was the one we that yeah. was one we saw off the bat. Yep. 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 Again, he stays square the whole time. It's a nice. Doesn't... It's a nice patient wait too mm-hmm. from the beginning. I mean, like he doesn't move right away as this play begins, and I think we're getting to see that early on. He he does a good job of staying at home with the quarterback here, maybe. And then once yeah. he sees it taken off. Yeah. Well done. All right. So what do we have with this one? Okay. That was, I think, him go working. Oh, yes. That was him defeating the cut block. Mm-hmm. Right here. And so you see even there, good technique. He's low on his base. He uses his hands to get off. He doesn't lose outside leverage. Hands the runner to the boundary. Yep, hands on the back, pushes down, keeps yep. his feet clean. And that can be as much a, an, an instincts thing as anything else. So the fact that he feels that, knows how to address him without giving up his leverage there, that's a, that's a really solid play. Yeah, it is. Well done. Again, how often do you see safeties come up just flying on that and end up going flying past the runner with that kind of a cut? Because he's got his like his his uh, pads over his feet, he's in control the entire time and able to address that block at the same time. Yeah, and there's no way this runner can cut or change direction on this play. Right, exactly. Anything. He can't cut back inside, which is acceptable because he's bringing it back into the defense. But Obi doesn't even give him that, and he just really he has no chance. He just pins him right to the boundary. Very well done. I really like that play. So we're going to return to the Houston game. We got him playing deep off the left side. A little flea flicker happening here. Nice job turning to the ball. And good see, and this, is, and this is, again, you, you see his tracking ability, but also the fact that he's 6'4", 220, and he's playing trail on a guy, and there's no window there. Yeah. There is just no window because he's so big. And so, obviously, if you're talking about him picking up a slot guy, uh, he's wiping every slot in the league out. Yeah. Um, and then you're, then you're also getting to the point where you're talking t- uh, big tight ends as well, too, obviously. Yeah. That's, that's such a big thing in the NFL now is flexing the tight ends out, working them downfield. That's the guy I want doing that. Honestly, if I'm an AFC East team, if I'm Buffalo, if I'm Miami, if I'm the Jets, how is this guy not way up on your list? I'm not saying he's going to erase Grok, but don't you think he, at least with his skill set, is going to give you a fighting chance? Yeah, he absolutely will. Or, you know, you can see him covering Jordan Reed or Evan Ingram mm-hmm. when Evan Ingram comes mm-hmm. in. Or Bucky Hodges if Bucky Hodges actually makes the conversion to being a tight end. Or, sure. you, you know... Greg Olson, you know, up the seam, you know, maybe even, right. maybe even on post routes where he's coming across to help cut off a guy like, oh, I don't know, John Ross. <laughs> oh, no, imagine, if you're, imagine if you're Miami sitting at 22, knowing you have Gronk, obviously, yeah. and, and Buffalo with their pick has taken OJ Howard. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't that make you think about that? Because that's four games of, Big guys that can stretch the field, 
Yes. So you really don't have anyone to properly deal with right now. Absolutely does. I think that's a terrific option, and I agree with you about the New York Jets and and the entire AFC East in that in that in that frame of thought. I mean, that makes perfect sense. You know, so I mean, yeah, I like that a lot. I mean, you could even say you could say that about a lot of about a lot of divisions as we look. Oh, we sure, no question about but that. that AFC yeah, West I mean, look, really look at uh, the NFC North too. Yeah. Um, Minnesota has their, uh, well, I mean, even Minnesota, I mean, they've, they've got a strong, but I mean, I could use, I wouldn't mind him next to Harrison Smith alternating, doing, doing different things. I mean, you could do a lot with that, but having to deal with, uh, uh, Martellus Bennett now in green Bay, obviously Ebron has developed quite a bit as a, as a receiving option yep. for Detroit. Uh, I mean, that. It's uh, good. Chicago, Chicago. Who is, who is anybody in their secondary? Yeah. So. No, it's a wonderful thought. It's a wonderful thought. Or yeah. if you know, I mean, if a Ladarius Green gets healthy in Pittsburgh, you know, mm-hmm. some of these NF, some of these AFC North teams. I mean, certainly you can look at that. If, um, you, you know, some of the slot players that that these teams have, it could be. Yeah. It, it definitely can be dangerous. So, now we're gonna have them in, playing some red zone action here. We got him. Looks like we got a little bit of man coverage going. This one's on. funny because because you actually makes a mistake here. Let, go, go back to the snap on this. Look where he is. Look where he's aligned. Okay. Yeah. He's trying to take away the inside leverage of of this receiver. But he lets him inside. And he lets him inside immediately. But that's okay because he has eight foot long arms. And yes, the <laughs> the ball's a little bit behind, but he can still reach around. So. Because of his size, his length, he has that ability to recover, even if he does make a mistake like that in man coverage. That's a nice play to show. Yeah. Because, yeah, technically, bad move. Yeah, ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, he needs to punch that receiver yeah. with his inside shoulder. Yeah. With his, with his uh, left arm. But this is. But that's part. Of, that's part of it too, because I mean, we can look for flaws all day, but ultimately, when it comes down to it, players are going to make mistakes in the NFL, right. and it's what can you do when you make those mistakes. Well, we've already seen he has the range, so we know his recover, his recovery speed is going to be there. He's going to be able to do that down the field. But what can he do in, in short areas like that? And because of that length, and, and that that strength, and and everything that goes with him physically, he's going to be able to recover from mistakes like that. Yeah, because the NFL is just as much about off-script plays as on-script plays. Yes, absolutely it is. There you go. Well done. That's See, I like plays like that where you, you know, where you're thinking beyond the structure, and, and you've shown a lot of those today. So let's take a look at a couple others. Uh-huh. This is one of those where it'd be nice to have. I think eventually we do get a second view, okay. but it's another one of those where he's so far off the ball and he tracks that from so far away. Yeah, I mean, let's see if we can see even with starting point here. We can't even see where he's starting. No, you can't. I mean, but he's not. Okay. I, I don't think he's like fully tilted to that side of the field either. He's tracking that a long way. Yeah. Because you can tell he was at least in the middle of the field, if not the opposite hash. Based just right. on his shadow where he's running from, he's at the hash right, the near hash right now. Yep. And you can see how deep a drop he is because he's taking a direct angle. Yeah. To the sign, so to the sideline. Let's see if they have another angle that shows it. Yeah, not quite. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's one of those where typically what you'll end up seeing is, is most safeties having to take a more conservative angle back there. So their aiming point is really the opposite 45. Right. In order to get there in time. But he's, but he's flat. going hard. He is flattened out completely, and he is right there. Again, part of that is part of that is ball skills. Even though he never is actually trying to play the ball in the air in terms of He's always trying to just knock it out of the receiver's hands. 
Yep. Part of that is ball skills, understanding, okay, I have to take this angle to get to the ball, to right. get to the catch point here. And he's able to diagnose those so quick that it makes him that much faster. Yeah, makes total sense. I mean, there's no way he could die for that ball, and really, why would you even want to do that? You're the last line of defense. No, so, yeah. no and that's the other part of it, too, is understanding the situation there, that you know he's not going to try and – play the actual ball he's not going to lay out on the guy he knows he has to run through it to make that play yeah so now we're going to get to see a too high look looks like well what do we have now maybe not why is that a wind up (laughs) (laughs) well there he's just just too big, too physical for this yeah. guy. He cuts him off downfield. He's bigger than him. He can turn and he's able to turn and run from off, from off coverage. So we've seen, we've seen him recover from mistake and press. We see him pick up and cut off a guy downfield and off coverage. We've obviously seen him in multiple zone looks, his range. So yeah, got, a, got a good feel of the fact that he's seen a little bit of everything and shown competence and everything. Yeah. And you can certainly imagine a Gronkowski working up the seam on this play. Mm-hmm. Well done. This was a really nice look at Melon. Was it Melon Fonwu, correct? Melon Fonwu. Melon yep. Fonwu. Okay. Very nice look at that. So, w- you know, you talked about where you'd like to see him go. Where Where do you think he's going in the draft at this point? He's a tough one to peg because, let's be honest, when you have – the measurables he does. I understand safety is one of those positions not that's not traditionally thought of as super impactful, but that being said, we're going to have two going in the top 10. I don't think there's any doubt in anyone's mind that Adams and Hooker are going. Um, if we're up to me, that would be where he would be going. He'd be going top 10. I might like his film a little bit better than most, um, ultimately, I think he's probably going to end up in the back half of the first, beginning of the second. Uh, last couple of days, it starts to sound like there's there's more uh, more of a pickup for him. But I think it's one of those things where you look at teams in the back of the first round, what they're looking to do, and as as good and as deep as his class is, you're not going to find guys that are quite as athletically gifted as him or is versatile and the fact that he can do so many different things that he can play in Carolina's cover two, that he can not only be a free safety in a cover three team, he could potentially even play corner uh, at Seattle, which by the way, they have a need there as well. I'm not suggesting they're the pick uh, in the first round, but that wouldn't surprise me one bit. I I think that's probably going to help push him into the first round. Just the fact that, there's no one scheme that kind of rules him out. That's great stuff, Josh. And for everyone um, who's been watching us, we thank you for joining us today. And you can follow Josh at the on the Twitter handle that I've displayed throughout this show. And uh, for Josh, I'm Matt Waldman. Thanks again for watching. And you can subscribe to the RSP Film Room by going to the YouTube channel RSP Film Room and hitting that bell. And you can also go to my blog, www.mountwaltmanrsp.com, for more information. So thanks again for everyone watching, and uh, we'll see you again.